name is Anna Downs and my business is Move Well with Anna. Um, I am a personal trainer, but I specialize in working with uh, women in pregnancy, um, preparing and in postpartum, um, preparing them for the physical demands of pregnancy, birth and beyond. Um, and that is my business here in Thailand. completely honest it was a family decision uh, we we were working in the UK and um, my husband and I both had very active careers in the British military and then we both left the British military and life in England in our little bubble felt very uh, stifling so we looked for international opportunities uh, with our young family at the time uh, and Thailand seemed to present um, an exciting option for us. So my husband is a teacher, we moved on his career and I continued to run my business from Thailand back in the UK. But then after we realised that we enjoyed living here a lot, um, it made more sense to uh, start a, a limited company here because we decided we we're going to stay for a little while. So the motivation to move here was uh, lifestyle, with our young family and then since then it's been trying to turn that lifestyle into something a little bit more sustainable and a little bit more with a little bit more duration. Very different in Europe and in, in the UK my specific niche is a very powerfully strong growing emerging market. There are many providers, many trainers, there are many people doing what I'm doing. Um, when I moved to Thailand, I realized that, um, when I moved to Thailand, I realized that actually nobody is really doing this. Um, and uh, I found that the market was wide open, but that has come with a lot of challenges as well as um, a lot of rewards. The challenges are that a lot of people don't even understand what it is that I do. So when I say my with the, the market that I work with everyone's like well, why would you do that there are so many other people that you can work with mm -hmm. so that's been a challenge but the reward has been that there aren't many other people doing what I'm doing so as long as I can pr pr prove my professional um, uh, competency and I'm getting good results then I have a very big market to work with because people will always become pregnant and they will always have babies. <laughs> so, <laughs> a few different ways. The first one was I connected with other professionals working within the same demographic. So, um, doulas, mid midwives, um, people who advise uh, on lactation consulting um physiotherapists so i found a network of people that were working with the same demographic um and shared my knowledge and so we built a and it, it's not a formal but an informal referral system so if i'm working with somebody who has um uh real problems with uh, breastfeeding and nursing then i can refer on to a lactation consultant and if they're working with somebody who's got really bad back pain and they're really struggling with their core strength they refer them to me and so that has been really fulfilling and really rewarding um, and the other way is uh, through referrals word of mouth um, mainly on social media platforms mainly on Facebook um, I think the main the main one is that to run a uh, to run a, a, a legal business here in Thailand as a foreigner, um, you cannot just be a small startup company. It, uh, you have to start a limited company, so instantly you have to have a payroll of four Thai employees, um, and there are various uh, tax implications and um, accounting um, finances. So. In the UK, if I started um, a limited uh, a business, I could be a sole trader. I could just decide one day I'm going to do this, and you know, as long as I fulfilled my tax obligations, I could just start there and then. But here in Thailand, it is a much bigger legal entity, which is tied into your work permit and your visa, and so you have the challenges that I needed to have confidence that I could 
earn above a certain threshold where I could pay for staff, pay for a monthly accountant, pay for my work permit and my work visa um, before I even, you know, you have to take that risk and know that your profit margin is going to be big enough that you can have that large financial commitment before you even see a profit. I think I, I wish that I had understood um, the cultural systems of hierarchy um, a little better before I before I decided to set up. Um, specifically within the medical profession, I wish I'd understood that many people um, here have not they don't like to outwardly question the opinion of somebody in authority. Um, and I found that quite challenging when working with women who are working with medical professions, professionals who hold an outdated or an outdated opinion um, because they're there doesn't seem to be the ability to challenge or to ask questions without causing deep offence. And I, I think if I'd understood that um, a bit better when I started my business, I would have approached a few problems slightly differently because I don't want to create conflict for my clients and I don't want to create fear. But sometimes I think the advice that I offered when I first started did create conflict and did create fear. So if I'd known that, if I'd been a little bit more um, empowered with that information, I would have made some slightly different decisions. I just think that if you are starting a business here, it you know, and you're and you're going to do it within the framework of the law, then it has to be done with real intent and research and understanding because like I said at the beginning you can't just set up as a sole trader and see how it goes and it doesn't really matter if you don't make any money if you're going to do it you know properly here it is a real commitment and you know maybe you've practiced your business somewhere before you've come here because I don't think it's an easy place to um, decide to become an entrepreneur I think you need to have a real vocation and driven passion and reason or you've got a real gap in the market that you can see because um, you know your your ability to live in the country is very much tied in with your ability to run your business because your work permit and your visa are attached to it so it can't be a casual I'm just going to try it and see it has to be a very deliberate um, action because you need to understand the consequences um, but if you can do it, then it's incredibly rewarding. Um, be confident, make sure that you have the, um, you have the profits, you have the ability to make your money from the outset because your outgoings are significant before you've even before you've done anything. When you have a limited company, you have the salaries of four people and your your monthly tax to be considering. So uh, either have a financial buffer for the first couple of years or know that you, with confidence, that you will make a profit from the outset because the financial commitment is significant. Search to see if there's a gap in the market and uh, if there is, dive in because it can be incredibly rewarding. Bangkok, I mean, Bangkok is the most amazing city I have ever been to. I feel like in one day you could have 20 different experiences ranging from super luxe, um, wildest dreams, fantasies of, you know, rooftop cocktails and just living a life that probably you wouldn't be able to imagine for yourself back in the UK and then on the other side of it you can be having the most delicious street food 
um, sitting on a plastic chair in a dark, dingy alleyway with cockroaches running over your feet and still be thinking it's amazing. Um, you can have all of that in one day. So Bangkok is, for me, one of the biggest highlights of living here. It's a city that I never thought that I would fall in love with, but the longer I stay, the harder it is to leave. The fact that I could have a weekend um, at a, you know, within a couple of hours journey on a beach in a, I could have that kind of holiday for a weekend that most of my friends and family and, you know, people that I know back in the UK, uh, that would be their once in a lifetime trip that they would have saved for, for five, 10 years. But with the cost of living and the cost of transport here and the ease and the, the, lo the location that I could have that experience in a weekend at a moment's whim, um, which is amazing. <laughs> I love the fruit. <laughs> I really love it. <laughs> I love the variety. I love the flavors um, and I love the accessibility. I love the weather. I'm a big believer in a little bit of vitamin D and um, <laughs> that being good for your well-being. The fact that when you escape into nature, um, there are limited things compared to other countries with tropical climates that can kill you. <laughs> so <laughs> not so many poisonous snakes, spiders or, you know, or sharks in the water. So <laughs> I feel like in terms of a tropical climate, it's relatively safe and I don't feel very threatened most of the time, which is, uh, is surprisingly important to me. <laughs>